welcome back to innovation seminar now the post lunch session is on innovation at higher education my name is sanjana tiwari i'm a student of asm group of institute and i'm very delighted to tell you all that i'm a student ambassador at amazon web services mahatma gandhi has once said a man a man is a product of his thought what he thinks he becomes taking a leaf out of his thought the topic of today's session is how young innovators can vouch for challenges in new normal how the team can encourage and imbibe entrepreneurship and lead to innovation start with this i would like to introduce the panel of the session on innovation at higher education dr bheem rayar maitri director iim tiruchirappalli mr kumar shekhar vijendra co-founder and dr rajendra NIE LIT Guwahati Ms Margarita Mori Professor University of Lai Kila Itli Dr Anand Parker Dr No Innovation Incubation and Management Linkage Savitri Bai Phule Pune University Dr Francisco Velas Dean College of Business and Management Cities Mexico Ms Ana Opalka Erasmus University Coordinator University of Applied Sciences in Naisa Good afternoon. Before we begin the session, <clears throat> I would like to introduce the keynote speaker for the session, Dr. Deepak Pathak, Professor Emeritus, IIT Mumbai. Padma Shri Professor Dr. Deepak Pathak is a computer scientist and academic, and a recipient of Padma Shri Award for his contribution in science and technology in 2013 by the Government of India. Professor Pater obtained his bachelor's degree. Uh, thank you, Sanjana. I think uh, uh, thank you so much. Just uh, let me introduce myself, uh, my dear friends. I am a teacher, like many of you or some of you at least, and I have been associated with IIT Bombay all my life, almost more than fifty years. Uh, so thank you, Sanjana. Thank you, Dr. Pash Pandey, uh, and thank you everybody for giving me this opportunity. I wish to briefly talk about. the entrepreneurship aspect of innovation when you want to become an entrepreneur <coughs> you want to initiate a startup company and set it up as a regular company and take it to greater heights that is the desire for most young people who have creative ideas and who have aspirations uh, to build a large enterprise around it <coughs> i am tempted to share with you an anecdote an incident that happened more than 20 years ago when i had set up a business incubator in iit bombay those were the heydays of uh, world wide web and we were receiving many applications from interested groups of students and we were shortlisting them based on uh, the nature of the idea based on the possibility of their market uh, capitalization etc etc and we were interviewing people a group of three students uh, one of them asked me a very interesting question after initial discussion he said my father wants to meet you i was quite surprised why would father be interested in this anyway i agree and a very interesting conversation ensued in that meeting the father says i had sent my son to iit bombay to get a good degree and a good job why are you injecting such nasty ideas in his mind of uh, taking a business risk and so on <laughs> so i said he and his teammates have some very good creative ideas and they can actually build a very successful company so we believe if selected they should get a chance he says but what if they fail so why should they fail they are good people they have good ideas and so on no but you are charging money i said yes our incubator was going to charge 50000 rupees per month so for one year they would have a every team would have an expense of about 2 uh, 6 lakh rupees and i said uh, i think it is possible for you to arrange a loan of 2 lakh rupees for your son he says yes 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 i can take care of that but what happens if he fails then i said my dear friend he has a good degree from iit bombay he will definitely pass with good marks so even if he fails after one year he will get a good job so what is your problem he says no but he will have a loan of 2 lakh rupees on his head so i said but he will get good salary he will be able to repay it and why do you think of failure he might succeed then he says you still don't understand professor if he fails you say he will get a job 
but he will have a loan of 2 lakh rupees who will marry him i was completely perplexed i said i beg your pardon he said that in my community the parents of prospective brides look at the economic stability education etc 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 now if this young chap has good education may have a good job but he has a loan of 2 lakh rupees on his head nobody will give their daughter to him uh, i i said i see although i did not see at all anything but when i thought about it i realized that marriage was merely an incidental articulation of the real fear of taking rest the indian middle class uh, thinking was not built around taking risk unless you came from a business family that night i called karval rekhi and nandan nilekani who were supporting our incubator and i told them i have a marriage problem they were quite amused when they heard they asked me what is the solution i propose and i said very simple i have modeled the charging policy based on the incubators i have studied but i wish to waive off the charge for first year completely oh that's a good idea they said so i said i don't need any more money from you you have given enough funding but i want your permission to use part of the money for operational expenses they agreed and rest is history the incubator is now society for innovation and entrepreneurship what i am trying to share with all of you young people is that while you might be willing to take the risk you also have to convince your family to let you take that risk and you have to tell them that it's a worthwhile risk it's a calculated risk and there is no harm even if you fail you can do well in life today fortunately things are so different that you have an environment in the country where entrepreneurship is encouraged by families you have a lot of venture capitalists who are willing to put in funds to support you it is in this context that i would like to share with you four principles that i believe all of you must follow in case you want to build an enterprise the first and foremost is love only those ideas which market will love why i say this all creative people fall in love with their ideas that is natural unless you are passionate about your idea you cannot build anything substantial on it but you may make a mistake of falling in love blindly with those ideas without checking them against the market please understand that as an entrepreneur you wish to create value and wealth you are not there just for uh, uh, trying out innovation but you want to create value and wealth that can only be created by market forces so unless the market loves your ideas there is no point in falling in blind love with your idea so tweak your ideas appropriately find out what the market loves and then fall in love with those ideas and and carry on with it the second point i would like to mention is you must do focused hard work i hope all of you understand that hard work has no substitute in life i mean people much smarter than us have tried for 4000 years of recorded history to find an alternative for hard work and nobody has succeeded but blind hard work alone is not sufficient the hard work has to be very focused hard work particularly when you are building an enterprise so let me tell you just two things that you ought to do uh, you ought to focus on number one learn revise and refine your business knowledge this alone will help you to make realistic business plans this alone will help you to prepare your pitch for raising funds and also to convince your prospective customers of usefulness of your ideas so unless you focus on understanding these things your entrepreneurship may not succeed very quickly the second point i would like to insist on there are many of course but i just chosen to respect the deadlines you are working as per certain plans missing a deadline is absolutely absolutely bad for your enterprise you must work 25 hours a day if necessary but meet the deadline and the same feeling must be inculcated in the team that you gather around the third point that i would like to suggest is learn to persevere you see whenever you are undertaking anything or even in normal life there will be failures failures will happen whether we like them or not and to be hurt by a failure is also natural but to remain hurt and keep sulking 
is detrimental to your activity. The more time that you spend in sulking, the less time you are able to spend in doing something positive about the next day. I have myself followed a simple principle of giving 24 hours in case of any failure. I cry that day, I feel bad, whatever, whatever, I cry that night. But next day morning when I see the sun shining in the morning, I say, ah, here is a new bright day. Let me start all over again. So try and do that. Not more than 24 hours to sulk because there is only limited time that you have in your whole life as well as to build the enterprise. The fourth thing that I would like to suggest, fourth and last thing, but I think the most important thing is to be very, very careful about your behavior. What do I mean by behavior? Of course, we are all well-behaved people. But I would like to stress two things. Number one, be extremely ethical, scrupulously ethical. Follow the law of the land, follow the word that you have given, market respects, the world respects tremendously if you keep your word. Don't make commitments lightly, think about it. But once you make a commitment, even if sky falls on your head, you must live with that commitment. That must be the ethical standard that you must pursue. You will not only become rich and great, but the world will respect you more. The second thing I would like to suggest is more from a day-to-day -day perspective. I have seen young entrepreneurs becoming very excited when they get the first angel funding or something. Now, if you start spending that money on buying a car or living luxuriously, you are misled. The investor is giving you money to build that enterprise. Every paisa of that money must be utilized in enhancing your team, in improving your technology, in doing everything else. You have no right to that money. You know what is the most valuable money? The money which customers pay you. When you start getting money from the customers, you have every right to spend it and you should actually enjoy that. This, is a, this requires an immense amount of self-discipline. I will end this with a small anecdote that happened a couple of years ago when we were honoring uh, Bhavi Shagarwal, as some of you might know, Bhavi Shagarwal and his uh, uh, colleague, uh, 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 set up Ola. Ola is one of the successful ventures. And he was being interviewed on a fireside chat when we were honoring him with the Distinguished Alumnus Award. And the lady asked him this question that I understand that your wife wanted to purchase a car, but you said no. And he sheepishly said, yes, we have resolved that we will only use Ola for our travel. Now that requires tremendous self-discipline when you have actually earned crores of rupees. I'm not saying all of you go become as mad as Bhavish, you know, most of IITNs are mad, but you have to have some madness and you have to have some element of this commitment for self-discipline. Well, I have taken, I think, slightly longer than what I was scheduled to speak on, but I would like to just conclude by repeating the four points that I would like all of you to remember when you become entrepreneurs and build something to create value and wealth out of the creative idea. Number one, fall in love with only those creative ideas of yours which market will fall in love with. Number two, do focused hard work, not just hard work. Number three, learn to persevere even under failures. And number four, be very careful about your behavior. Build an iron discipline, self-discipline. That is what will sustain you. That's all I wish to say. Uh, to conclude, I would just like to congratulate uh, uh, young Aditya. I, I mean, I, I met him very briefly in an event in Bangalore and I was quite surprised to see this young chap actually having uh, creative ideas of fantastic nature. He has built something which is very significant. I would like all the attendees to try and see whether they can commit to participate in this important initiative of spreading not just entrepreneurship, but public good, because the thing that he has created is very useful in the current times. Thank you so much, and sorry for exceeding my time. Thank you so much, Dr. Deepak Patak, sir, for motivating us all by being a living example of kindness and selfless service to our nation. So good afternoon, everyone. I myself, Saili Dungekar, and I'm a student of ASM Group of Institute. 
Moving forward, the next signatory to honor us with his presence is Dr. Bhim Raya Maitre. Director at IIM Tiruchira Palli has held several senior leadership positions, including Chairman PGPM, Dean Academics, Dean Graduate Programs at MDI Gurgaon. He specializes in the field of management of quality, supply chain management, service management, and project management. During his distinguished career, Dr. Maitri was Dean at l and Institute of Project Management, Varodra. And prior to this, he was a Dean in Academics and Alumni Relations and Professor at International Management Institute, IMI, New Delhi. Dr. Maitri had published more than 100 papers all over the world in international and national journals and conferences. He was a member of various national level committees of higher technical education and industry. He has also designed and directed a large number of MDPs in various sectors. Dr. Maitri is also a panel moderator. So I request you, sir, to take the session ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I take this opportunity to thank uh, the organizers, uh, particularly the organizer of World Student Innovation Summit, uh, Master Aditya Pachpande and Sandeep Pachpande for this uh, creating such a great event and bringing together on a safe single platform on a very relevant topic in this period of crisis that is innovation and uh, i must uh, say that i am extremely happy to listen uh, professor deepak patak when i was doing phd at iit mumbai sir was the esteemed professor i am very happy to listen to you sir uh, you being uh, a professor of my institute, IIT Mumbai, Institute of Eminence, and I am sure uh, your uh, speech is definitely not only inspirational, but it is you are you yourself is a role model for many young generation and people like us. And thank you very much. And uh, so, without taking much time, I'll come to the. We have an esteemed panel of uh, six uh, members. And Dr. Apurva Palkar, Director of Innovation, Incubation and Linkage, Savitrabai Phule University. Apurva is heading Innovation Cell. It is a very relevant topic and, and she is part of this particular panel. And second panelist is uh, Kanwar Sekar, Vijendra, co-founder and chancellor, Shubhit University. Kanwarji, he has founded. He is an edu entrepreneur, I can call uh, Kanwarji. So again, it is a uh, as uh, uh, Professor Patek rightly said, you are education entrepreneur, edu entrepreneur, and Dr. Yamnan Jenta, director NIE LIT Guwahati. So basically, Northeast is known for something special. You know, it is sun rises from the east, and always you know, beginning uh, of the you know the good rays, as sir talked about the morning sunrise. So I think Professor Jenta, so you are the one, you are going to be the ray of hope for the entrepreneurship and innovation and a very apt and right person. And Margarita Mori, Professor, University of Lakila, Italy. I think uh, uh, international expert on the panel. I, I, think, uh, I, I think I might have met her in Pune in one of the occasion. And, and very uh, nice to meeting you and also welcome you for the esteemed panel member. Dr. Francisco Velez, Dean College of Business and Management, CETYS. So uh, great uh, uh, participation in this particular panel. And finally, Ms. Anna Bupalka, Erasmus and University Coordinator, University of Applied Science in NYSA, Poland. So I welcome all my esteemed panel members for the very apt and very important topic. And I begin with one quote of the Winston Churchill. He said, we should never waste the good crisis. So COVID-19 is a very good crisis or it is a very good crisis or it is a very, uh, uh, one of the, uh, again, I can call it as a, uh, 
disruption. You know, we use the word disruption very common in related to digital world, but the COVID is also one disruption. Tsunami is also another disruption. So in this disruptive crisis, innovation and creativity, this is a very apt and important topic. Our first Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru said, every crisis has given us an opportunity to think and opportunity to think differently. And that is how this COVID brought us all of us together on one platform. And we yeah, got connected, even though we are located in different distance, we are all together connected because of the, the expertise, like uh, Professor Patak, you know, the computer and, and information technology has brought us together on one platform and we are seeing each other. And there is a depth of distance, I must say. So distance has no meaning, but we are all together in one platform, even though we are located in different places. So this particular topic, innovation, as uh, I think innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship, these are the three words normally, commonly come together. And in this crisis, the adaptation and innovation, these are the only ways we have to create a new channel, new way of leading the life and also taking every sector in the next orbit through different channels. Because many things were possible before COVID-19, they are now impossible. For example, we are all from academic education fraternity. Face-to-face -face education has become impossible and distance Online education has become mainline and mainline education has become offline. We call it as offline. So in this kind of crisis, basically new way of doing the same thing differently and also better way. And if you talk about in business term, it is a cheaper, faster and better. So these three terms normally to get cheaper, faster and better. Always we have to look towards the innovation. We have to do the things differently. As Professor Patak rightly said, we have to have a madness, M-A-D. So unless until we are mad, we are not going to make any miracle. So mad means it is not an English word of mad uh, uh, interpretation. It is a make a difference. Until we make a difference, that is M-A-D, make a difference, we cannot get into innovation. So I have very great esteemed panel and I'll just give one example as Professor Patak also rightly said, uh, you know that all of you know that paper boat, it is a Bangalore based company uh, collaborated with uh, Indigo and everybody when you get into Indigo, you get all those paper boats, you know, whether it is a different kind of, uh, you know, mango, all those kind of juices. So Mr. Neeraj Kakkar, Neeraj Kakkar, uh, was a student of MDI Gurgaon. He was alumnus of MDI Gurgaon and he was working in Pepsi as a general manager in Bangalore. And I was the dean at MDI Gurgaon. When I came for the alumni meet at Bangalore, I met him first time. And after the meet, I went back. And when the moment I went back, within eight days, he called me and he said, Professor, I have a different plan and all, all those things he said. Initially, I thought, you know, he's already MBA from MDI Gurga, good institution and all. But he said, I have planned to go to Wharton and do another MBA. The moment he said, I have planned to go to Wharton, I said, you must go. And he went. And within a year, he came back with one of the American. He started a small beginning at Gurga. Within two to three years, he moved to Bangalore. And today, he is one of the established great entrepreneur and player. And, and earlier, I used to talk once in a month or so. Now, he is such a busy person. And once in a year, probably, I will talk with him. So it, it, is, it is all because of you know the person who just made a humble beginning. And he made they took that business to the higher level. So this is how. It is all about the mindset. It is all about what we think. And as rightly, uh, a student rightly said, uh, a man is a product of his thoughts and what he thinks he becomes. What Mahatma Gandhi said, innovation is what about, it is all about what we think, what we focus. And I have a great esteemed panel without taking much time. Uh, may I now invite 
Dr. Apurva Palkar to, I think each member can speak about five to six minutes and then we can again, if time permits, we can take up some questions. So may I request uh, Professor Apurva Palkar, go ahead and, and you can give your thought uh, for about five minutes on innovation on this great occasion. Uh, thank you, Professor Maitri, uh, for uh, setting the context. And of course, uh, after the, the Professor Fatak has spoken, it is just impossible to kind of entice people because uh, uh, the kind of experience and exposure that he has and the kind of credibility. I think we, we, we've just been kind of learning our ropes from people like him. But let me uh, try and put uh, in context uh, what Professor Maitri uh, just now put in. On the pandemic front, I've been leading this uh, innovation incubation and linkages uh, cell at Savitri by Fulip Pune University for now uh, close to two years. Uh, we are a very new entity. We just started off in 2018. And uh, we are actually now faced with a pandemic and I have closed around 40 startup companies with me. Uh, I would say that uh, a pandemic has challenged the very existence of many businesses. The world is in a state of uncertainty and it is difficult to predict how long would we be living in this state of affairs uh, with a production shield and a continuous sense of fear which is existing around us. Uh, uh, so the common feeling that most of the startups have is that will we be able to sail through this crisis? Uh, there are a series of do's and don'ts and the mind is busy ge guessing what happens post the pandemic. So the new normal that is being spoken of and discussed about. And I was really excited to see the shifts and the changes that happened in a lot of my own startup companies. For example, one of the companies that I lead uh, in the incubation center uh, was in the artificial intelligence and machine learning space. And quickly they... Uh, uh, diversified and changed into an area of customer experience in the pandemic. And to my surprise, in, in a span of about two months of lockdown, severe lockdown, when most of the businesses were struggling, this was the company which clocked in a business of about close to uh, 60 lakhs. For a startup which is only three months old, this shift and this change of gear was very, very significant. So the point that I want to drive here for all the innovators is it is essential and important to keep our minds open to the change that happen around us. And I always feel that, uh, you know, there is always uh, uh, an opportunity in, the day, in such challenges. And uh, such opportunities are spotted by the right kind of people who have the right kind of visioning and the right kind of thinking towards what are the uh, uh, market uh, forces? What are the market challenges? And how do I adapt my product to adapt to this? Which is the most important thing for any innovator to come into the startup ecosystem. Second important thing that I want to drive here is uh, from the Indian context, I want to bring this. Uh, and that's the ability of people to have a thought on what we call it as the analogical thinking. If I have to bring the pandemic in this particular space of analogical thinking, if uh, all of us remember, uh, probably I don't know how many of us have actually been in villages in, uh, in, 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 in uh, rural parts of India, uh, say about 20 years back. So in 20 years back, the kind of space that existed was that there used to be a bucket outside. People would wash their hands and feet and then get into a house. So analogical thinking becomes very, very significant in terms of driving the new order of how businesses will shape up in times to come with pandemic. I see this as an opportunity. So one important thing that would happen is the changes in the way real estates uh, will have the designing done for uh, the housing in times to come. The second shift and change that is likely to happen is work from home. So there could be a multiple opportunities that may come for innovators to think through on this particular problem stated statement and drive some kind of solutions. The third important thing that I see is very go going to be uh, growing and would be the new normal is the way in which we have uh, uh, the consumption of our food. In fact, if we look at the data for last uh, four months, the only industry which is not got impacted is the food sector. 
where uh, the consumption patterns and spending for a given household has remained to around 26.1% of what has been the earning for a common household. And this is where the shift and change is likely to happen in terms of healthy food, in terms of uh, the food where uh, it gives us nutrition uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is going to be the new order in times to come is what I really feel. And for all the startups, I will, uh, and I, I think I'm speaking to people who are innovators and people who are going to get into the startup ecosystem. What becomes essential and important is how do I look and define my problem? Is my problem frequent? Is my problem urgent? Is my problem mandatory? Is my problem legal? So I need to understand in which category does my problem fit in? And is this the problem that the customer wants to accept and willing to look for a solution? A lot of times, as Professor Patak said, people uh, engage themselves to uh, the solution that they have actually developed for themselves. But I think a pandemic has given us a lot of lessons for all of to, uh, us to understand that we need to adapt and understand the needs, changing needs of the market and bring in our product and services categories which will align to these particular market needs. So what becomes more essential is the ability to have critical thinking, the ability to have analogical thinking, the ability to spot the problem bang on and then get into the startup ecosystem. These are the four things that I wanted to share with everyone. I hope I was given two minutes of time and have been able to cover what I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Apurva. Uh, I think you uh, brought out the very important uh, points um, relevant to the current market situations and the demand and supply, supply aspects. Now, may I request uh, uh, Professor uh, Converse Sekar Vijendra, co-founder and chancellor, Sobit University. Sir, thank you very me. much, Dr. Maitri. I am not a professor, uh, actually. Um, okay. But you are always with professor, you know, then automatically you will become professor. This is one of the art entrepreneurs should have. <laughs> <laughs> Learning from people around. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe everybody has seen the intro. It's fine, beta. Uh, now it can be removed. Let me start. Okay, I will introduce myself. I am a social entrepreneur and uh, I hail from a small village in Uttar Pradesh. We have two universities. One is in uh, Meerut, one is in District Saranpur. Uh, hospitals, research centers, Ayurveda, we are working nowadays, yoga, naturopathy, a lot of things we are trying to do. So we call ourselves social entrepreneur more. First of all, let me congratulate Aditya uh, God bless you, Aditya. You are doing a wonderful job. And this Raksha box is indeed a wonderful initiative. We need more such initiatives. Dr. Sandeep, thank you very much for the invite. Asma Chandananand, who was instrumental to bring me here. I was listening to three wonderful scholars. And it was fortunate to listen to Dr. Pathak. And uh, when he was talking about that, uh, what is the uh, four points? So as today it is uh, Gandhi Jayanti, so it reminded me that how innovation and Gandhi can be connected. So like Gandhi always talked about innovation. And what uh, he said, and if you look at the history and the life of Gandhi, so one was identify a worthy problem to solve. If you really want to be an innovator and understand it before addressing it. The second thing, as Dr. Pathak mentioned, that you have to cater the market. Gandhi said, cater the mainstream. By defining clear objectives, outcome, and risk. Very important point that every time your innovation struggles will not define with success only. Many times you have to fail. And when you fail, you have to accept it. We generally fail to accept. We fail, but we do not accept that we fail. And 
willingness to change yourself before you feel that your innovation should change the society, the world, the others. This is what Gandhi's life says to us. And uh, thank you, Dr. Patak, that uh, you mentioned all these four points in different words. Dr. Maitri mentioned a very important point that when he said that this crisis is beautiful. He talked about disruption, he talked about this uh, pandemic, and he was trying to find a silver line on that. If we look at Indian mythology, in Indian mythology, we have Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. So we have international scholars also with us. So Brahma is actually, as per Indian mythology, the creator who creates. Vishnu is integrator who integrate everything. And Mahesh, Shiva, is disruptor. And when disruption is there, again, new creation starts. So whenever there is a pandemic, whenever there is a crisis, we should say now Shiva is happy, a new disruption has come. Now we have to think for a new normal. Something new has to come into this society. And when this new normal comes, here the role of innovation starts. Because for me, if you look at the definitions of innovation, as I mentioned, neither I'm a professor nor an academician, but you know, innovation is not only to think out of the box. Innovation is not to remain in a status quo. When you decide that you have to add value, it is not only creation of wealth, it is creation of values, social values, values for the society also. If I look at my journey, I was young in early 20s when we decided that uh, computer as education should come to this country. I'm talking about 87, 88. And we decided with a small uh, computer center, we should start computer education, quality education should be there. And the day we realized that from here, we have to go to higher education, especially to Aditya, I would like to say, because nowadays I am afraid when I see a TV ad, which says that uh, my son is doing coding and so many investors have come now to him. So I'm afraid that in, in spite of making innovators, we are more towards making coders and uh, creativity will be killed somewhere. Somewhere they will again fall uh, in a trap. So once you are on the top of anything, I always say innovators should jump again to start something new. You should not stop there. That is what is required. And every innovator is an entrepreneur. You have to own it. And every entrepreneur is an innovator. It may be in the way of ideas. It may be in the way of other things. What is happening like new education policy nowadays, we are talking a lot. So 1968, Kothari Commission, we talked something about innovation. This 2020, we are talking a lot about innovation in our new education policy. I was born in 68. So if I look at, since those days, we are talking, we should have innovation, we should have, uh, we should develop a, an ecosystem where innovation should be there. So what was wrong in last 50, 50 plus years? The wrong thing was that we gave a fear to our children that they should not fail. The parameter in the society, what we put was how many marks you have. If it is 75%, okay, fine. Distinction was there. Now though it is 100%. So we have put people with a fear. So the most important thing, especially for the young generation, is be fearless. And I'm happy, Aditya, when I met you first time, you were fearless. You were talking about your ideas. Many times they will look mad. You may be crazy. People will tell you, you are crazy. And that craziness will bring results. You know, what innovation or entrepreneurship is, it is like planting a seed. Or when we plant a seed, it goes dark in the earth. We do not know what will happen there. Moisture is there, darkness is there. And the seed will not remain seed to become a plant. So that adaptability has to be there, that 
feeling has to be there okay yes that idea is there one day i will rise that plant will come so we have to put efforts in the dump environment darkness where nothing is happening dark is there but willingness is there desire is there and we wish yes we have to uh, we have one university in a small uh, town and when people were talking about innovation innovation and innovation so naturally our professors were talking vice chancellor was talking everybody was talking about one fine day i met the students i asked okay do you know what is innovation let us do some innovation let us start some uh, new companies some startup should be there okay. startup india is happening so generally what happens many times our boys and girls are afraid when we use big jargons so i said okay fine jogar ko aata hai na okay let us identify some social problems which are nearby in our area and first let us have a temporary solution for the problem that may be called a jogar then we will have a sustainable solution for that problem and then we will have a disruptive solution for that problem these three stages have to come and in our university we have started one uh, seiz this is should be started uh, dr sandeep in your uh, institutions also it is a special zone like scz it is seiz this is a skill entrepreneurship innovation zone okay it is more a med house and what is that all about that anybody and everybody who has an idea they can go there it is not related to the course curriculum it is not related to anything they can go there i have this wild idea and we will support it we will find people to support it and once yeah. we support it your time is over i know okay so these all small things have to be done and remember one thing to be innovator or entrepreneur it is not necessary to think very complex things think small in small the big is lying but ruksh ek chote se beej mein hota hai thank you very much thank you for giving me an opportunity thank and so one more yeah. one minute yeah now may i request dr yamnam jainta director nie lit guwahati i think you can put up your views in 5 minutes please okay sir thank you very much Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the group of Asma, who is leading by Dr. Sandeep and one of my friend, Dr. Power. And uh, if I have to say, in fact, uh, I have grown up by listening so many nice, nice lecture of uh, Dr. Partha or our other speakers. Uh, we are generation of uh, 1970s. Uh, we have seen some up, up and downs in our life also. The, the the day that have uh, passed out our uh, graduation it was in 2000 exactly so there was a very big problem about y2k problem i am from the engineering uh, with the science so we computer and electronics fellows are having a lot of problem so during those time some of us could survive something with some preparation something like that so my myself is basically a professor as well as a director right now here so i share something what we are doing in our classroom what i have learned from the industry as well as from the classroom uh, there are a lot of saying that uh, we cannot uh, control then we cannot measure and it is specially for the youngsters that anything that you want to do first you have to try control if you can control then you can measure in forms of hours in of the the level or my own activities now saying like this it is hinting that let's try to do something which can be controlled by you there are some activities that uh, i'm going to share and another thing that we have to see is we have to see the social responsibility thing that how much the social is going to accept about your startup your bt something like this so i can find out some 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 uh, departments here where the required as well as a lot of reengineering things are required one is about the education sector where i am right now and another one is the uh, cyber cyber crime another thing next one is the agriculture medical and another one is about the waste management system 
so this is directly related to every human being in your house as well as in a classroom or in the environment so i am going to talk about the education system it is learned that 70% of the materials 70% of the materials are going to be converted into uh, automated system like ar vr type of thing where the students can understand the problem that we are having is a multiple problems first is about the subject problem so what do you mean by a brain what do you mean by heart what is the different component of the hearts so it is written in english or it is written in chinese or some other language it is not uh, the student is not a native it is going to be very difficult so convert converting the material the learning material into the video the videos dub into the local language is a very very a lot of startup lot of requirements are there in this conversion of the ar once you have the ar vr material so this has to be delivered to the boy i have a two boy one is uh, in fourth class one is in class one it is a very nice of uh, the infrastructure of digital india i'm also part of uh, digital india because uh, nalit means nilit means the national institute of electronics and information technology so we are working uh, with hand to hand with the state missionary as well as our uh, local entrepreneur to improve this delivery system for example um, one video is there very nice video the size of that video is 1 gb in order to deliver this 1 gb or to deliver a small message the story to a small boy of 1 gb the small boy don't have a income it has to be incurred to the income of his father or mother we have a problem of network we have a problem of delivery so in order to find out some ways some startup can come up that they make some interface between so that this delivery mechanism can be easy the size the window something can be minimized and human has some vocals so the vocals some of the pitch can be reduced so that 1 gb video can be minimized it into you know maybe 5 mb something like that like that so that that's one thing and another one is gadget problem now everybody is talking about 3g 4g but as i am representing the northeastern part of india so there are a lot of problems they have to climb on the tree in order to receive the signal so in this one again we are expecting minimum 3d 3g network system is going is not going to be successful so that is why some mechanism maybe something like that you deliver this one on pack mail basis like a postman deliver something maybe in the time of an admission same thing delivery problem is there so some fellows also can want this one another one is about the interface system Be before the covid system the material has been mapped so that it can be fit for uh, you know the rural indias but in this one remote to remote places also we need to fix that's why the medium that we are delivering and the material that we are delivering should be in the accents of the local language unless and until it is not in the local language it is very difficult to understand for example if we see a traditional american uh, uh, movie or a british movie half of the things only we can understand so this is the pressure that it is going to given to the uh, small pupil so the startups can think about reengineering of this activity by in incorporating lot of best practice of user interface and user uh, experiences so all these things are available so in nalit gawati what we are starting is we are starting two very good uh, active over here we are running lot of courses for formal non formal and other thing but the two special courses that we are studying is about around 300 hours a course all as a startup activity thinking what are the things to be understand what are the things to be done most of these courses are and another one is for teaching the students to understand about the steam the science technology engineering management so we are think for all as a robotics for the from the starting from uh, a7 to so on so there we have to think from the cutting cutting of the pieces color color and make some we don't know rock type of thing physical then slowly through some coding and also i was i am very proud to say that there is also one of the top uh, country which is leading from the front uh, regarding the artificial intelligence so we have similar type of talks on 5th of uh, this october also 
and so on, so on. So I'm talking about this one, which is a problem in the society. I, same thing for the waste management and other things. There are a lot of startups are required because our youths, many of the youths are don't understand. So they are throwing waste material in many, many different, different places. So we are developing a, some ecosystem type of data analysis type of system where the authority can connect all these beans, authority can connect all these recycler and then something can be done like a compliance of e-waste and all these type of things. This is something, some areas, like in Ecuador also a lot of drones, analytic and all these type of things. Now coming to the part of startup. Uh, automatically, nobody is born as a startup, some practice are required. Maybe at least one person, two person people are born with the intelligence mind, but 90% of the people, we believe that uh, one person of the Indian or uh, world population goes to the medical, then remaining two person goes to uh, engineering, or they are uh, uh, wanted trip, but remaining 97% is confused what to do. So we have to bring up those guys who is, is confused, 97% population is used. So we have started because I was working in some university outside also like Swinburne University, Nottingham Trent University in outside India. So we learned something from that. And also I was fortunate to work for British Telecom and Toyota for some time. So I did some idea from the industry, CMM level number of industry and academia. And I tried to do myself something, experience something. So you what do we do in a classroom? Time yes, out, yeah. So already, okay. you know, just minutes more. You can just uh, take just, 20, uh, just one twenty seconds. Yeah. Yes, please. sir. Yes, sir. So here, here, I want to I want to bring the digital skill set between because now we were talking about technical skill set. Now, in order to collaborate, because collaboration is required. So digital skill set among the collaborators are very very important. So we, as a teacher from the classroom itself, the assignment can be split together. The the partner in each of the assignment can be rotated so that the students among the students also can be communicated in the laser hour also as an assignment so that they can minimize uh, uh, the tension about their uh, uh, these mental issues what is happening right now so i just want to say that see the social responsibility and co collaborate and cooperate and digital skill set has to be developed among the youth thank you sir Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Jenta. And before moving to two international panelists, panel members, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Apurwa to make a very important announcement. Apurwa, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sorry to have bashed in once again. Uh, so uh, just wanted to make an announcement that uh, Aditya has uh, done a remarkable work and uh, we are happy as an incubation center in uh, Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University to incubate Aditya's company into our incubation center on 2nd of October. With the kind of endeavor that he has, uh, I think uh, it, it's something that uh, being in Pune, this is a small gesture that we could offer from our end. So we'll be happy to onboard Aditya's company into the fold of the university. With this, Maitri sir, if you allow me, I will take your leave. Thank you. Great, great. Thank you very much, Dr. Apurva. I think uh, hearty congratulations to Master Aditya. I, I am sure uh, your uh, incubation in the incubation center of uh, Savitri Bhai Phule University I am sure your company will stand up in the crowd and will become a role model for many more, not only in India, but the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Thanks, Apurva, and uh, RT congratulations to Aditya. Now let us move to the next uh, speaker is uh, Margareta Mori, Professor, University of L'Aquila, Italy. So ma'am, you can put up your uh, uh, views in five to six minutes. Please go ahead. Okay, good morning, everybody. Oh, good afternoon. It's almost noon in Italy. I'm talking from my home in Rome. Um, I can just uh, self-introduce myself. And I, I would like uh, to say that uh, um, I am the scientific coordinator of an academic agreement uh, with ASM group of institutes. 
uh, we signed the agreement last January when we had uh, um, income, the income conference. So it's, my, it's a huge honor for me uh, to participate in this event now in this special role as, my, as uh, the coordinator of this agreement. Um, and thank you so much for granting me such a, a big honor and pleasure. Uh, I know that time uh, is uh, a constraint, so I will just uh, summarize uh, uh, some thoughts that uh, uh, I would like to share with my colleagues and especially with the dear students that I know are following us today. Um, my thoughts are on, of course, innovation and how to create a better world in terms of a more sustainable world, and particularly on the role of higher education. So there are three keywords. The first one, guess what, is innovation. The second one is needy people, poor people. Uh, and the third one is donation. They all have to do with the reason why we all are here today. Uh, and um, all these three keywords um, have to do with the sustainable development goals uh, that uh, have been adopted by the United Nations uh, when the 2030 agenda was signed. And many countries, uh, many of the countries uh, uh, that participated in that uh, um, uh, decision are represented here. So uh, that's one point uh, we, uh, we cannot miss today. Uh, of course, innovation is a prerequisite for making our so society progress. And uh, uh, education, especially higher education, can support, can help, uh, can uh, uh, act as an incentive uh, uh, to um, innovate. But what do we mean by education? Education is a broad concept. We've learned through uh, the, um, uh, within today's uh, framework uh, um, of the coronavirus outbreak that education is also e-learning, e-teaching. But also we have to account for lifelong uh, learning. Uh, so education is no longer uh, it's a concept that's no longer confined to a classroom with young, uh, with pupils, with young students. Also, let me add uh, that education um, implies uh, a, gener a generation path, which means that we all uh, should feel committed to live uh, a more sustainable, a better world to future generations. But, Today's story um, teaches us uh, that uh, roles can be re reversed. Young innovators uh, can support uh, all the generations. So young people can teach us a lot. So two messages. One is to Aditya. Um, let me add a personal note. I met Aditya. Uh, six years ago for the first time, and he was very, very young. Uh, it makes me feel so happy today that today is our brainchild, uh, the, the young innovator we um, would like to encourage today. So um, this is my message to him. Uh, congratulations and best wishes. And to all the students, to all our students, our dear students, our students are our future. So um, my note to them is uh, uh, try to pursue the joy of learning rather than uh, trying to fulfill the duty to learn. Learning is a joyful activity. Let me use a Latin phrase, ad maiora semper, to my students, which means towards greater and greater things and achievements. Best wishes to all, especially to young students and young innovators. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much, um, Professor Margareta Mori. 
now may i request uh, our another esteemed panel member miss anna opalka erasmus and university coordinate university of applied sciences in nysa poland good afternoon everyone i have a pleasure to uh, speak to you uh, from my office in poland at the university of applied sciences in nysa mm -hmm. We are a kind of practical university that teaches to the jobs. And in terms of innovation, which is mentioned today, I think it has a crucial meaning because uh, uh, towards uh, achieving the goal of innovation, we are teaching our students to become more innovative, to create, to, to become entrepreneurs. And this is one of our main goals. And at the beginning of my speech, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me to this outstanding uh, session. Uh, let me congratulate Aditya, from whom I met personally uh, while visiting ESM a couple of years ago. Uh, I remember him as a curious, interesting boy sitting in the bed uh, with broken leg, I don't know if he remembers, and asking a lot of questions. Even in, in that situation, he tried to find a way to make his life easier in such a uh, situation. So he invented a uh, many things that could help him to move, uh, even if he couldn't. Now I see a major man who cared uh, for others enough and they came out of his box and introduced in innovation to the Indian society and worldwide. Uh, but it's not an innovation until it's uh, implemented and actually works, in fact. So that's why I would like to encourage all the entrepreneurs, organizations and governments uh, do not underestimate those young brilliance that ask thousands of questions, test solutions and try to speak up in front of their parents, teachers and politicians. Let uh, those young people act, let uh, them uh, uh, support them with all available means because they are really the future of the world. And uh, I think that Aditya proved it uh, very, very much with this innovation. So thank you for that. And uh, Change begins when you identify the problem, that's for sure, and uh, trying to make the difference. I had a lot of sessions today in the previous session and now so many wise, uh, 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 let's say, statements uh, were given there. And uh, please remember as young people that problems cannot be solved with the same thinking that created them. So this is the only thing. Uh, that uh, uh, really makes the innovation uh, go forward. So uh, don't be afraid to be different. And uh, uh, that really is, um, uh, let's say, driver for, the, for your success. So uh, we have to teach our students as uh, educators, as uh, higher educational professors, teaching with the schools and universities, uh, this critical thinking. And you, as young people, you have to be critical also for yourself. So be critical uh, for your own ideas, and uh, it will really bring you to the state when you develop yourself in the best possible way. So uh, we know that at the moment, the economic crisis resulting from the COVID uh, is a special situation for all the countries. And, but even in that situation, uh, we can really find out some, uh, let's say, advantages. And uh, I believe that also your country and my country uh, try to do their best. And uh, we also found some potential in uh, uh, not uh, discovered businesses. And uh, it gives us hope that the world will uh, state whatever happens in the future. But it's also a great effort uh, from our point of view. And I really would like to uh, address this uh, message to all the educators that they have to feel this responsibility, uh, like not only giving the, uh, also to parents, not only giving the students uh, a kind of roots, uh, knowledge or even practical skills, but what should be given, this is the wings and teaching them how to fly and the rest it's really up to them. And uh, I think that uh, Aditya uh, used his imagination in a very good, solid way. Um, from my perspective, I'm teaching international marketing and I'm teaching cultural understanding. So please do not forget about this, that we are different all over the world, but uh, more or less we have the same needs, the same hopes and the same dreams. 
And I think that this could also be a reason why your product is successful worldwide. Of course, there is no questioning in terms of your uh, uh, innovation at the moment because of COVID. But if you create something else, I think it will be also valid to every culture. But respect the local needs, respect the local, let's say, habits or customs, and you will really uh, achieve a great success. And uh, I will finish with a poem for you, uh, all the young people, uh, which I really love. And... Uh, uh, this is uh, more or less like this. Between the memory of moonlight and the hope of sunshine, there is an area of darkness. You may walk across it or you may wait. If you choose to walk, you may fall down. It's a risk. But if you choose to wait, you may fail sleep and miss the moment of sunrise. That's a risk too. So uh, closing uh, and following Steve Jobs, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. And I wish to Aditya and all of the young students to become leaders of the tomorrow. So good luck to everyone and thank you for being our partners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Anna Opalka. Uh, I think uh, it was a great discussion after the keynote speech of uh, Professor Patak. Uh, he has made a strong foundation for the session. And I must say that uh, Dr. Apurva Palkar talked about, uh, you know, whatever the market demand based innovation, one has to focus and uh, uh, Mr. Konwar Sekar Vijendra, he talked about uh, today is auspicious day, that is a Gandhi Jayanti, social innovation. And, uh, and also Gandhi way of innovation, he highlighted, he focused on that. And Dr. Yaman Jenta, Director NIELT, Guwahati, he talked about IT-enabled and computer-based innovation and disruptions. Margaret Mori, Professor of University of Italy, she talked about education innovation. We are all, uh, many people are in the education industry from here, talked highly about education innovations and how to go about. And the last speaker, Ms. Anna Opalka, she talked about uh, her university itself prepared the students to become a great innovator, uh, not only for the nation, for the rest of the world. So to, with this, I must say that this particular panel discussion uh, has uh, brought out many important aspects. And on the great occasion, once again, I thank uh, uh, the organizer of this particular event that is World Student Innovation Summit by Sandeep uh, Pachpendeji. And I uh, wholeheartedly support this innovation movement. And it is a great moment. I think uh, uh, India is going to take a lead for the world leadership role in coming four to five years. And this is the right time. It is an apt moment, I must say and people like Aditya and many more such people will join. And you know that uh, uh, Pune is the land of, uh, you know, the Maratha kingdom, Shivaji. And I am sure the way he gathered the people and built the kingdom, I think this innovation kingdom under the leadership of Aditya Pachpende will come up and probably a day will come, a great celebrations we have to do in years to come uh, based on the milestones achieved year after year. With this, uh, uh, one important uh, point here is basically one line if you take away from this particular uh, panel discussion is it is learn to fail and fail to learn. Failure we should love. We success comes with failure. You cannot see both of them separately to uh, opposite direction. Success and failure are always together. Failure comes first and success comes last never give up that attitude is most important failure come and go but we can win the many wars if you forget about few battles we may lose but if we, we may win the war and that is what about failure and success we should love failures then only we can get into innovation with this i will hand over the session to uh, 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 jane uh, mrs jane and uh, she will uh, Take the next proceeding. Thank you very much. I thank all the panel members and Professor Potter. 
for wholeheartedly taking part and giving their insights to the young generation. Thank you very much.